Hi my darlings, welcome back to my channel. My name is A Mama. If you new here, you're welcome to the family. <laughs> so today's video I'm talking about my hair journey. All the different things that I've done to my hair in this life. I'll be talking about it. So sit back, stay tuned, relax, and listen to all the things that I've done to my hair in this life. So, first things first, I was on local. Okay, so let me backtrack, right? So, when I was entering secondary school, I had hair, right? And then I thought that I was going to go to a boarding school, and I was excited. And then I told my mom and my dad, now I just cut my hair. What a mistake for me. So, I cut my hair. And then, guess what? I eventually did not go to a boarding school. I went to a day secondary school. So, I didn't go to boarding school anymore because of my age. I was too young for them to accept me into boarding school. Even though, I passed all my tests and exams, but I was too young. In case you're wondering, I was 14. What? What am I saying? Sorry, I was 14 when I finished secondary school. I was 8 when I went into secondary school, in case you're wondering why they not accept me. But okay. So, yes. I didn't end up going to a boarding secondary school. I went to a D. And then, guess what? My daddy said that I should not grow my hair again. So I was on low cut from my just one to my SS3. So just one to just three. When I say low cut, it was low. Right? It was when I went into senior secondary school that I started, you know, growing wings a bit and they allowed me to start growing it more. But yeah, I was on low cut for that six years of my life. And then when I got into uni, right, I started growing my hair. And then somewhere along the way, I don't know what spirit whispered to me. But in my final year, I cut my hair again of my own accord by myself. Like I went to I went to the salon and told them to cut it. And when I walked into the salon, I was like, I'm going to cut my hair, they're begging me not to cut my hair. Like, I didn't cut it entirely, so I cut it into what we know as Anita Baker. That's what I did. I'll look for a picture and see if I can find a picture and insert it on the screen. But that was the first time I cut my hair after I had been on look up for six years, right? So, after that, I now eventually cut off the relaxed ends entirely. So, like, I had my big chop, that was 2016. So, I became a naturalista, right? Fast forward to when I graduated from uni. I was a naturalista. I was doing all the things. My hair was growing. It was fine. Everything was okay. Then I finished NYC. Let's see. Timeline. So, 2016 was the first big job. Cut my hair twice and Tabika first, then full on big chop. That's 2016. So I served 2017. If I have that time correct. Yes, yeah, so I served 2017. So my hair was natural all throughout that period. And then you guys, you guys. Fast forward to 2019 again. I decided, oh, I'm tired of being natural. So what did I do? I relaxed my hair. And then I cut it into an Antarctica again. After relaxing it, cut it into an Antarctica. Let me not tell you the stages of that Antarctica. The back, you know how it's like a tapered cut, right? So... The initial time you cut it, the back was, I see I had hair at the back, like hair that you could pick and braid if you wanted to braid it right. 
But then it was just scratching my body for some very strange reason. So the second time I went to the salon, I told the guy cutting my hair, you know what? Fade out the back entirely. I hope I still have pictures. I will look for pictures and put up pictures, right? So I told him to fade out the back entirely that it was disturbing the whole look that I was going for. So fade it out the back. And then I rocked my hair for a while like that to do. And then I was tired. And then I went back to the salon again. And told him to cut it again. So this time I had a teeny mini baby fur. It was cute. Had a baby fur. So this time I didn't I just didn't leave it like that. I had like a look or look. I had like a part inside. I dyed my hair. Let me see when I I think I yeah I dyed it after I cut it this time after I cut it yeah. So I had like a part in I dyed it it was really king cute and nice this was um let me see 2020 yeah we got into 2020 and i yeah that's when i cut it that's when yeah that's when i cut it again so after it started going out i just left it and then it was going now and then it was flourishing and giving me baby girl vibes and then people were asking me oh what do you do to your hair what products do you use what routine do you have so just so that people would not come back and ask me again what i used to do to my hair basically products so i graduated from using um dark and lovely products so so my hair is not really picky about the products i use so you have to know your hair type and be sure that your hair can withstand certain things so i moved from using um dark and lovely products which are actually really good i recommend them then i moved to Cantu, so i started using all Cantu products so when i say dark and lovely product or Cantu products i was using their entire line i was using their shampoo conditioner leave-in conditioner um what's it called dip conditioner also i was using everything their oils everything so that's what i was using so in between when i had relaxed and um natural hair i was switching between those two products so when 2020 now right when my hair is natural and flourishing and Cantu is doing all things supposed to be doing my hair was ugh, it was healthy right and then you know to go do it again i did it again by myself this time in my house in my room i had to go buy the deck by myself and then i dyed my hair again just because i was tired of how it was looking i get really tired of my hair at times so it was flourishing it was doing fine and then you guys you guys you guys you guys guess what again guess what but first of december 2020 i walked into the salon you know why you're natural and you walk into the salon and tell them that you want to relax your hair they look at you strangely first of all are you all right is everything okay i get through the midlife crisis are you sure that's what you want to do but i'm like yes that's what i want to do so i relax my hair so we're currently in um may 2021 my hair is still relaxed um i'll show you the current length that it's at because i didn't cut it when it was natural i just excuse me i just relaxed it so I think, but yeah my go-to routine now that my hair is relaxed and the products i use um i use perfective okay sorry they used to be called perfective but they are now called mega growth so i use the mega growth line this is in no way sponsored video but if you guys see this video i am gonna sponsor it hello yes i can do another video for you we sponsor that one for yeah i use mega growth line at the moment so shampoo conditioner leave-in conditioner deep conditioner i do all of that so let me go through what my routine is so um currently 
I have braids in now, as you can see. So if I'm going to take this out, after I take it out, I do a deep conditioning treatment, right? So I deep condition, and then after I wash out the um deep con. So when I say a deep condition, so I'm going to shampoo and then condition normally, then now deep condition, right? So um, after doing that, I do a hot oil treatment. Apologies, my camera stops recording. So, like I was saying, after I do the deep conditioning treatment, then I do a hot oil treatment. So, for my oils, I usually mix up all my oils together in an applicator bottle. So, I use majorly four oils I use um, castor oil, olive oil, tea tree oil, and shea butter. Tea tree oil becomes my scalp is quite itchy. It's very, very itchy. So, please, if you have any suggestions as to how I can deal with having an itchy scalp, please let me know. I will forever be in your debt. And I will love you if you can help me find out how my scalp can stop itching me. I mean, comments below. Just let me know in the comment section if there's any um, suggestion you have for helping with um, itchy scalp. Tea tree oil actually helps a bit, but then it doesn't help for long. It still itches after a while. So yeah, I do that. Um, so what happens is that I set out a bowl of water. I can either microwave the water in the bowl or just pour water in the kettle and then boil it and then put it in the bowl. So I just either let it cool for a bit or I mix it to a temperature that's fine and the um, bottle one. The bottle won't melt in it. Just test it out. Now it's fine because women, our definition of warm is quite relative. For men, our definition of warm is hot. So please just let it be a temperature that the bottle won't melt in the bowl of water. Yeah, and I just let it by one side while I'm doing other things. Then I come back and apply it to my entire scalp and massage it in. So, that's basically what I do when I have my when I take out my braids or if my hair has been in cornrows for an upward of two weeks. I'm going on two. I generally tend to um, not keep my cornrows in for more than two weeks. Yes, after two weeks, I get to, to just take it out and wash my hair. So, if my hair is not in braids, it's going to be in um, a low bun. I will link the video of um, my go-to hairstyle when my hair is out of braids and I just want my hair to be. So yes, that's it. Um, for cornrows, see, so I would rather carry the cornrows that I'm supposed to wear under my leaves and like my wigs and carry it out rather than wear the actual wig. Because I think I have a very bad relationship with wigs. At this point, I think I'm either going to give out my wigs or sell them because I actually don't like wearing them. I have a very bad relationship with them. I just don't know what it is, but I can't seem to like wearing wigs. See, very once in a blue moon occurrence. And when it does, maybe if I can't we stand this for a week. After that, me is done. And done and it's not wearing the again. So yeah, that's my um go to hairstyle for when my hair is um out of braids or due to it. If it's not in cornrows, it's going to be in a low bun. Like I said, I will link the video of that for you guys to see. So. Let me see what else, what else, what else am I missing? What else am I missing? You guys, after all this plenty is not really plenty. I'm here to say that I'm tired of my hair to my sister that to cut it. But I've been warned by my sister that if I cut it. She's going to fight with me and our relationship is going to take a hit, so I don't want that. But I'm tired and I'm looking for new things to do to my hair. So maybe if I get permission from her sister, my younger sister, by the way, maybe if I get permission from her that I got cut, yeah, maybe I got cut. 
But then we'll see. But yeah, you should let me know. What can I do to my hair? What should I do to my hair? I'm just tired of it. At the moment, I've died, I've caught, I've had a baby fro, I've had a big fro, I've relaxed, I've died by myself. So, what, what can I do? What should I do? What can I do to it? Just maybe I'm a diet again. Maybe I'll diet blonde this time. Blonde have a lot of fun. What do you guys think? Should I dye my hair blonde? Should I dye my hair blonde? What's one other conversation? Or rather, not conversation. How is gonna happen with my mother when she sees that my hair is blonde? Ah. Yeah, when you have children, right? Just pray that all the things that you did to your parents that give them the tough time, they don't do it to you because. Hmm. So, let me know what should I do to my hair? Should I dye it? Should I put it again? What styles can I do? Like, I've gone anti I've gone full low cut, I've gone baby full, I've gone big full. I've done all that, so I just had what more. Can I actually do to my hair? What more, what more, what more can I do to my hair? So, you guys should let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know things that you've done to your hair. Like, I mean, I've dyed my hair by myself. I can't ruin my hair. It's not like I'm being proud or anything. But yeah, I can do what? So, what can you do to your hair by yourself without going to the salon? Because actually, I don't like going to the salon. I have a problem going to the salon especially when it comes to um washing my hair i only go when it's necessary so like when i relax my hair or probably when you when i have to braid or style it but if it's just regular in between washes i'd rather do by myself because i had an experience where shampoo water entered into my hair and since then i've not been the same the ptsd is real anytime you're washing my hair in the salon it's a bit of mm, a drama, a little bit of drama involved because I'm constantly running in it because I don't want someone to come up for since I met it. So, in between washes, I usually do by myself. So, you guys, thank you for listening to me rant about my hair and all the things that I've done to my hair and let me know what you think I should do to my hair. So, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope you liked the video. I, I hope that if you are a new viewer and you're making it to the end of this video and you have listened to me around thus far, please subscribe. You will bring joy to my heart. I'm a new. So please subscribe. And on that note, I will see you guys in my next video. Love you guys. Kissy.